protected our great American flag. I also want to recognize a great Kansas City legend who I met today at the plane, somebody that I've been a fan of for a long time, a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, George Brett of the Kansas City Royals. Where's George? He's around here somewhere. I said, George, how many years? 20. What was your batting average? 305. I said, that's pretty good. 305 for 20 years. Special guy. I want to thank a true patriot, your executive director, Bob Wallace, along with your outstanding national auxiliary, President D. Gilroy. Thank you, D. Thank you. And congratulations. To VFWs, if you want to know who's running, just take a look at Wilkie's score, because every single one of them, there'll be probably quite a few more, but the, in the Senate, that was it. But what a great vote, and he's going to do a fantastic job. There's been nothing more important to me. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I also want to thank our acting VA Secretary Peter O'Rourke for doing such a fantastic job in the meantime, holding down the fort until Wilkie got approved. And Peter is going to be joining the whole team, and they are doing numbers, and they are doing a job with choice and with all of the other things that we've gotten approved. Uh, they're doing some job for our vets. It was a very important commitment that I made to you during the campaign and we're fulfilling that commitment. Several terrific members of Congress are here today as well, great friends of mine. They've helped me so much. We're joined by Kevin Yoder from Kansas, incredible guy. Kevin, Kevin Yoder, what an incredible guy. And members of Missouri's congressional delegation, Vicki Hartzler, Billy Long, Jason Smith, along with your state's attorney general, hopefully, we need him so badly, hopefully your new senator to be Josh Hawley. We need Josh badly. Josh, thank you. In fact, Josh, do me a favor, come up here just for a second. Just shake my hand. This guy is a special man. Come here, Josh. Come here. Well, it's an incredible honor to be here today. Thanks to all of you for your service and what you mean to this country. But how about the leadership of President Donald Trump? What do you think? You know, when I think about President Trump, there's one word that comes to mind. That word is courage. Do you agree? How many people over the years have said that they'll do this or they'll do that, but there's one guy who had the guts to actually fulfill his promises, the guts to move our embassy to Jerusalem, the guts to actually stand up against our enemies overseas, the guts to put conservatives on the Supreme Court of the United States, and that's Donald Trump. You know, the president always says, the president always says we're at a turning point moment as a country. It's a critical time for our country, and he's providing the leadership that this country needs as we lead the world into this new century. And now I tell you what, I think he needs reinforcements in Washington, D.C. Do you agree with that? So let's, let's do this. Let's show our appreci appreciation again for President Trump and the leadership that he is giving to this country, and let's redouble our efforts and recommit ourselves to standing together, working hard, and making America great again. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> that was great. What a great young man. Before going any further, I want to take this moment to send our prayers to the victims of the tragic boat accident that took place 
in your great state last week. And I have to tell you, the whole world was watching that. We lost 17 beautiful souls, including nine members of one family, and babies for whom life was just beginning. Their lives were cut short, but they and their loved ones will never, ever be forgotten. A tragedy. We will hold their memory close to our hearts. I want to thank your governor, Mike Parson, a friend of mine, a great person, for his leadership during this terrible tragedy, along with the Coast Guard and all of the first responders who were incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next year will mark the 120th anniversary of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the oldest major veterans organization in our country. That's pretty good, right? For more than a century, the VFW has represented American heroes who beats loudly in every single American heart. We don't apologize for America anymore. We stand up for America. We stand up for the patriots who defend America. And we stand up for our national anthem. We're putting America first again, and we are seeing the incredible results. We're destroying the bloodthirsty killers known as ISIS, almost gone. We're calling the threat by its real name, a name that wasn't mentioned for a long time. It's called radical Islamic terrorism. That's what it is. You have to know your enemy before you can defeat your enemy. Earlier this year, I recognized the true capital of Israel, as Josh said, Jerusalem, where we just opened the American embassy. They thought it would never be named, and after it was named, they thought it would never get built. And I built it within four months. How about that one? You know that story. Four months. They came to my office. They had a document to be signed. One billion dollars for the embassy. I said, one billion? They didn't have a site. They didn't know anything. And our great ambassador to Israel called David Friedman, who's a very successful lawyer in New York City, one of the most. And he said, you know, we could do it a lot faster. We have a great site. We have a building already on the site. We could renovate the building quickly, and we could open the embassy if you'd like to do that, sir. I said, how much would it cost? He said, $150,000. I said, what? What? He said, I think we can do it in four months. So we're talking about one billion, maybe in 20 years, maybe never, probably never happens, right? We know what goes on. Besides that, I'd rather build ships or I'd rather build something else if we can save the money. If we can save that money, let's use it wisely. So I said, David, let's not do 150. Let's do like, how about 400,000 and make it nicer. And it's beautiful. It just opened, and it is beautiful. So we're many years ahead of schedule. And I understand, frankly, every president for the last many presidents has said, we're going to open our embassy in Jerusalem. And then they never did it. They all failed. They never did it. And I understand why. Because when it came time, and when people were hearing rumors about it, I was inundated from calls of every leader from all over the world imploring me, even demanding that we not do it, to a point where I never took their calls, alas. I called them back after I did it. You know, it's one of those jobs. Let me call it back. I was getting calls from kings and presidents and dictators. I was getting a call from everyone. 
And when I knew what it was about, I'd say, tell him I'll call him next week. <laughs> then I called him and I said, oh, I didn't know you felt that way. Well, it's too late. It's old. But I understand why they didn't do it, because there was tremendous pressure. We did it. We're proud of it. It's there. Enjoy it. And by the way, the biggest fan may very well be the evangelicals. They wanted that built. They wanted that there. So we're very, we're very proud of it. Yeah, because they want Armageddon to come, for the love of God. We've removed unnecessary restraints on our war fighters in Afghanistan. Those who risk their life and limb for our country, they deserve rules of engagement that give them the best opportunity to finally defeat the enemy. And we're making, for the first time in years, we're making a lot of progress in Afghanistan. I withdrew the United States from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. And Iran is not the same country anymore. That I can say. And we'll see what happens. But we're ready to make a real deal, not the deal that was done by the previous administration, which was a disaster. We're also pursuing the denuclearization of North Korea and a new future of prosperity, security, and peace on the Korean Peninsula and all of Asia. New images just today show that North Korea has begun the process of dismantling a key missile site, and we appreciate that. We had a fantastic meeting with Chairman Kim, and it seems to be going very well. I know we're joined today by many incredible veterans of the Korean War. Thank you for your courageous service. As you may know, we're also working to bring back the remains of your brothers in arms who gave their lives to Korea. And I hope that very soon these fallen warriors will begin coming home to lay at rest in American soil. That's starting the process. At the very end of our meeting, I said to Chairman Kim, good relationship, good feeling. I said, I would really appreciate if you could do that. He said, it will be done. So I was very happy, and I think that process is starting fairly soon, we hope. Because we believe in no American left behind. We believe in that, right? No American left behind. I want to thank the VFW for your devotion to our fallen heroes, unknown soldiers, prisoners of war, and those missing in action and their families. No one better understands the horrors of war than the people in this room. It is the warrior who bears the scars of battle and who prays most fervently for peace. That is why we remember George Washington's advice that the best way to preserve the peace is to be prepared for war. And that is exactly what we do all the time. My thinking is always on military and military strength. That is why I'm proud to report that we are now undertaking the greatest rebuilding of our United States military in its history. We have secured $700 billion for defense this year and $716 billion next year approved. We're ordering 147 new F-35 Lightning Fighters. This is an incredible plane. It's stealth. You can't see it. 
So when I talk to even people from the other side, they're trying to order our plane. They like the fact that you can't see it. I said, how would it do in battle with your plane? They say, well, we have one problem. We can't see your plane. That's a big problem. Stealth. Super stealth. The best in the world. We make the best military.